Hey, hey. Wow, here we go. And of course, uh, we're here with Cube Jerome. Here we go, here we go. Good to Every see you. Every time. I know, man, like clockwork. It's awesome. <laughs> Touch notifications. So um, it's so nice to be able to just be like, here comes the show. Let's uh, let's stop and see what's, what's happening today. Um, love it. Yes, yes, and Alex Smasha, uh, <laughs> I, and by the way, I don't even know if I pronounce that right, but I just think it's Alex Smasha. So totally. Like that's, things. that's how I imagine it. It is too. So yeah, totally, totally makes sense to me. And thank you, the legends to, to the legends. Um, I, I don't think so, but I really appreciate it. So uh, used to be the Smasha. So yeah, totally. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's. I was thinking Smasha was familiar, but I knew it wasn't Alex Smasha. So I thank you for tying that back together. Yeah, we got. I think a name I don't recognize, uh, Murali Surov, uh, oh, on our YouTube channel. So uh, welcome and thanks for watching from YouTube. And you know that's actually probably a good. Talking about push notifications and and YouTube and all that, we stream to a few different places. We stream to Periscope on you know both of our accounts. So that's like yeah, there you go. That's like two. Then of course the AWS Twitch channel, so Twitch.tv/AWS. Then uh, we also stream to Twitch.tv/AWS Containers. And then uh, youtube.com slash containers from the couch. Uh, so that's five. There's also for Kubernetes content, we stream into a giant uh, Facebook group that's dedicated to Kubernetes. Um, so we're there as well. So that's six for any Kubernetes content. So definitely uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and to the uh, twitch.tv slash AWS containers, because when you get the alert notification for those channels, you know, it's going to be this show and you know, it's going to be container related content, you know, it's going to be from the couch. So, um, it's definitely a show you'll want to watch. Um, when you get the alert from twitch.tv slash AWS, that might be this show, might not be. Sometimes the alert goes out, sometimes it doesn't. So today, for example, it didn't go out on that channel because it had gone out for a different show. So when you want customized alerting, definitely uh, twitch.tv slash AWS containers or uh, youtube.com slash containers from the couch. Indeed. Uh, uh, this is awesome. So far, what I learned in Kubernetes on this channel, GitOps, OPA, Dynatrace. Awesome. Uh, security group for pods. Um, so, yeah, like we try and cover it all, you know, little by little. We're going to cover, I think, everything, uh, at least everything that that I know, plus everything that Adam knows, plus we'll start bringing in people that know things that we don't know. And we're gonna try and cover everything, uh, you know, that that there is to talk about from a container's perspective. Yeah, and you know that that um, the GitOps show with Weave was was pretty awesome last week on Thursday. Um, yeah, you know, having having people from WeaveWorks kind of walk us through uh, GitOps and you know, kind of show some examples, live demo. You know, that's the one thing about this show we always talk about, Brent, is like we don't you we don't do PowerPoints here, you know, we're not just going to yeah. be an hour of, of PowerPoint slides. We really want to make it interactive um, and we want to demo things and, and see the actual experience live. So I exactly, that was cool. exactly. Like I, I hate to say this in public, but I'm going to say it in public anyway. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't like webinars, so I don't want to run a webinar, you know, and I definitely don't want to run a webinar every single day. Um, so what yes. I want to do is just talk about a problem and the solution or the, a problem and one possible solution or maybe a couple possible solutions. And, and so, you know, I feel like 
these problems aren't unique. You know, everyone has similar problems at one point or another. So let's just talk about them and and figure out how do we how do we remedy them. And um, that's that's kind of that's kind of what I go for on this show. And I feel like it works out uh, it works out pretty well. Yeah. And on the topic of problems that we like to solve, what problem are we going to solve today? Well, so there's a lot that that sort of a lot of assumptions that go into this topic, but let's just let's just lay them out on the table right now. What we're going to talk about is resource management and like how do you set limits for different potentially different groups, at least different pods, possibly different classes of compute. How do you set limits so that one doesn't override the other? Like if you were running a giant cluster um, in your data center or in AWS and uh, that cluster was getting shared by dev and production, what you wouldn't want to happen would be dev fills the whole cluster up and there's no more room for production. So we're going to talk about uh, you know ways to prevent that from happening and and stuff like that and um, that kind of begs the larger discussion of should you put dev and production on the same cluster should you put two developer groups on the same cluster should you how like where should you draw the line and I think that's a that's I don't know, Adam, what do you think? I kind of think it's a philosophical debate as much as it is a technical debate. Exactly. But and I, I so agree. Like this is, there's certain kind of topics that are very debatable. And I think it is, it just comes down to philosophy, what you prefer and what fits best with your team. Brent Conway's law, right? Like yeah, you're going to kind of, as you build and do things, it, it's going to model your organization, but it, I mean, and you could literally sit two people down and they could fill up three hours of content just, talking about why one giant cluster is better than many small clusters and vice versa. So I agree. Exactly. So one giant, you know, very broadly speaking, one giant cluster gives you the ability to like, you know, make less carves, make less cuts and uh, have your resources spread a little bit more efficiently. Uh, you have fewer control planes to manage, fewer upgrades to roll out and all that stuff. But, the opposite is also useful because, uh, you know, what if you dedicate a, an entire cluster to a team um, and and they have, you know, all the resources that they need dedicated to them? No one will ever trounce on their their space or their resources. Um, but then take that take that a step further and and say, OK, well, the team shouldn't shouldn't mix dev and production. So they're really going to need two clusters, a dev cluster and a production cluster. Oh, but really there should also probably be a staging and maybe a QA. So now we're at four clusters per team. And, you know, if you're a decently sized microservice organization, then you might have 20 or 30 or, you know, at Amazon, hundreds and hundreds of those teams. So, um, you know, times, two, three, or four clusters, and now you're talking about just a whole lot of clusters uh, that have to all be managed. And so now everyone's doing a bunch of repeat management work over and over and over again. So it's all trade-offs. There's no right answer, but at least go into it understanding what you're getting into. And one of the approaches might be, let's just build a big cluster, you know, and we can still, it doesn't have to be one big cluster. It can be two or four or eight big clusters, you know, it, it still might be big clusters that you divide up among groups. But how, once you start doing that and once people start sharing resources, then you have to figure out how do you protect, uh, you know, one group from another? How do you go, how do you make sure that everyone uh, is treated fairly? And so that's what this content is about. So there's there are mechanisms available for you to do both. You can have a bunch of tiny clusters or you can have fewer large clusters and have people share them. So what we're going to look at today is that scenario where you might have few large clusters and people are sharing them. What can you do to help people 
uh, you know, have the resources that they should have and, uh, and, you know, not overuse the resources that they shouldn't overuse. So we're going to look at a few different mechanisms. We're going to be looking at uh, just how do you, how do you assign the right amount to a Kubernetes request? We're also going to look at how do you set a Kubernetes limit? Then we're going to look at resource quotas uh, so that we can cut off usage beyond a certain limit. And then we're going to look at pod pri setting pod priorities to allow for preemption. And this is actually, that's one of my favorite uh, things to do. I think it's really cool. So uh, we'll, so we'll save the best for last. Um, OK. So let's just talk first about what are the resources and what are the limitations. And at, at the most basic level, the thing that we're doling out uh, in a cluster is CPU and memory. So, you know, at minimum, those are the two resources that you're going to want to make sure that you enumerate with your cluster. And if you've ever done EKS Workshop, and by the way, this content is all coming from EKSWorkshop.com. If you, do, if you aren't familiar, you can go there and you can uh, run through all kinds of topics and learn, learn more about uh, running Kubernetes. It's, I know it's titled EKSWorkshop.com, but, but I'd say probably 80% of it applies equally to just plain Kubernetes and has nothing to do with uh, specific EKS stuff. So for example, uh, there's a question here uh, about AWS secrets integration with Kubernetes, and we have a chapter on that. So you could totally, uh, you know, uh, go find that chapter. And in fact, I think Pavan has done a talk and the video from that talk has been embedded into the chapter. So uh, definitely check that out and find out more about uh, integrating secrets. Um, so that's what EKS Workshop is all about. It's all about learning more about Kubernetes. And then there are some times when there's some specific, uh, some specifics to EKS like that chapter might call out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the intermediate section of EKS Workshop under the chapter uh, resource management. And let's just talk real quick about uh, when you deploy a pod. So when you deploy a pod, up until this point in the workshop, we never really specify how much uh, that pod should be allocated. How much memory should that pod be allocated or how much CPU should that pod be allocated? And that's not good. That's actually kind of a bad thing to do. We're doing it in the workshop that way to keep things simple. But in reality, especially in production, it's really good to go into a production deployment knowing the amount of resources that you need. So by specifying the, the amount that a pod should have, that allows for the scheduler to find, to locate you know, the available resources and then assign uh, that pod to the right node. So let's just take a look real quick at what you have to do. So part of the decision-making process involves reading metrics. So uh, our pod is going to, or, and our uh, kubelet is going to emit metrics to someplace. That someplace is a metric server. So we start off by deploying a metric server. And there's a chapter, there's a module linked here on uh, setting it up or setting up Helm. And then from there, you can use Helm to install the metric server. And you see that it's super, super easy uh, you're just Helm install metric server, and that's really all there is to it. And this isn't your typical like time series database, you know, type service. There's not a lot of data that this thing is going to accumulate over time. This is basically, um, you know, one metric that we're tracking for uh, any given uh, any given resource. And as soon as the new metric gets emitted then the old metric gets overwritten. So we're not actually like keeping any kind of historical view in this metric server. We're simply looking at, you know, the current point in time view of what is being utilized. So that's why this metric server is super simple to run and super simple to operate because you don't have a lot when it comes to storage. 
you know, there's not there's not a bunch of time series data that you have to go back and and read or anything like that. So I've already done this. I've Helm installed the metric server, and uh, because of that, I can I can look at uh, cube control top node, and I can see that I have three nodes. Uh, I have um, you know. CPU utilization listed, memory utilization listed, uh, really, really simple stuff. Let me see if that will help uh, line up the columns a little bit better. And then uh, cube control top pod, all namespaces. Uh, you can see I'm not really running anything except uh, the metric server and then stuff in the cube system namespace, AWS node, or DNS, cube proxy, all the basics. This is just a basically a freshly installed cluster um, with nothing on it right now. Okay, so let's talk real quick about, um, uh, hey, good to see you, Anton Christensen. Good to see you, uh, welcome back. So let's talk real quick about cube control, uh, or sorry, about the limits uh, that you can set. When you deploy something, you can specify, uh, you know, the limits that something should have. So, like for example, in this deployment, we're setting that uh, it should be limited to a gig of memory and half CPU. That half CPU, by the way, can also be expressed in terms of a thousand. So, a thousand twenty-four is one CPU. So, five twelve would be a half CPU but I kind of like this format a little bit better just because it's, I think, easier to understand human-wise. So let's grab this and let's deploy it real quick. So we created the basic limit CPU pod. We're just gonna compare these real quick. So there's also the concept of a soft limit. So a soft limit, instead of setting a limit, we're setting an amount that we are requesting. So we're requesting one gig of memory and a half gig or a half CPU. Um, so let's run that real quick. The difference between a hard limit and a soft limit, Adam, what do you think? What's, uh, what's a hard limit going to do if we try and go over? You won't be able to. Exactly. Right. It, it's pretty much the, the word. It, it, this is good, good terminology here. Hard means it's, it's you, you say, this is my limit do not exceed this limit. Whereas soft, we're a little more fe flexible. If there's some room, please. Exactly. Feel free. So Go then over. that really begs the question, why would you set a soft limit at all? And the answer is because you want to make sure that you're gonna get deployed to a resource that has enough memory and CPU. So you definitely want to specify how much you need. Uh, but if you happen to go over a little bit or a lot, um, it's okay. It's not going to. It's not going to come along and kill your container. So there are scenarios where you know that might be useful in your environment. So you have that mechanism available to you. Uh, so this third one is we're se setting up a request and we're requesting one CPU and one gig of memory, but we're going to run something that. Ha oh, sorry, we're requesting a CPU and memory, but we're setting up a, a limit of 1.8 and two. So we're setting a hard limit, but also we're uh, bringing up the pod that is going to use just under that hard limit. So we should see that that pod uh, runs. And then we're gonna do the opposite here where we're setting up, um, uh, we're asking for the process it's going to allocate two gigs of memory, but we're setting a limit of one gig. So in this particular one, uh, we're going to go over our memory limit. So at this point, if we get pod, you see that uh, basic limit memory is getting ohm killed. It's because we went over the memory, right? So it needs two gigs of memory, but we we set a limit for one. So we set a hard limit. So that thing is getting ohm killed and we're not able to actually have a running pod. Everything is that an else? exit code 137? 
I bet it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're familiar. <laughs> yeah, oh, totally. Memories. Oh, exit 137. That's a good thing to look for in your cluster. That means that you got ohm killed. Uh, you use too much memory. So that's the Docker exit code. Um, so yeah, I'm sure that the orchestrator comes along and, the, and tells uh, the Docker daemon, you know, when it sets up the container, what all the limits are. And so the Docker daemon would just ohm kill that sucker. Uh, so yeah, I bet anything it's going to be exit 137. So Brent, can you maybe like ex explain, and, and you'll probably go into this, so I tend to do this, I tend to jump the gun here, but so I guess what what's a good scenario where it makes sense for me to set a hard limit versus a scenario where it makes more sense to set a soft limit? That's a good question. And I think one scenario for hard, I think hard limit might be an easy question to answer because um, again, uh, man, I'm glad you mentioned Conway's law because now it's popping into my head that, yeah, it kind of maps to the way your people might be organized. So um, when you're, when you're on different teams and you're sharing a cluster, you know, those teams are working independently of each other and they're sitting there deploying and they have to coexist on this cluster. So they're, you know, they're sharing resources. So you might want to set a hard limit, you know, from, for between teams, uh, you know, so like this team has a hard limit of four gigs of, of memory and they can share it among, amongst themselves, however they see fit. But uh, this other team has a, has a different hard limit and they came in saying we need six gigs of memory. And so the cluster was sized accordingly and they are going to get their six gigs of memory. And by setting that hard limit, you're effectively um, protecting, you know, that team that asked for six, they're going to have their six always available. Whereas the team that asked for four, if they, if they tried to use six, then uh, they would be stopped. So it's it's kind of a, a wall that you can build, and it's probably something that you would end up arranging to look very similarly to the wall that exists between teams. So yeah, I bet it's going to be organized mostly like how your people are organized, and then inside the teams, that's where you might consider soft limits. So you know, I want to make sure that. Uh, you know, in my team set of my of 10 microservices uh, that we can dole out memory however we want, but we want to try and make sure that we understand where memory is getting utilized. So if we go if we go over, let's detect it, but let's not actually kill it. You know, because we still might have some headroom uh, to be able to to deal with that. So That's a good point. Yeah, cool. I just want to say one more thing. I just yeah. to add to that, you know, it's a good way to even if you start with soft limits, understand your how your uh, application operates, and once you have a good baseline, right? So you have a time series database collecting those metrics, not metric server, and you're able to collect. Then you can maybe say, okay, we've realized this is our we never go above one and a half gigs. That's our hard limit, yep. you know, and then you have a, a stricter boundary after you've learned exactly. So if we take a look, this has been running for a minute or two now. So if we take a look at Cube Control top pod, let me pop that up to the top. You can see that uh, you know each of our pods that are running, uh, basic limit CPU pod is using a half CPU and a half gig of RAM, just like we asked for. And then the basic request pod is using one CPU and two gigs of RAM, and then that restricted pod the one that was going to come in just under uh, our hard limit is using 1.795, uh, so 1.7 CPUs and uh, using a gig of RAM roughly. So, um, so yeah, I mean, like it's really easy to see what's the usage, and then if you wanted to come along and set a hard limit based on this usage, you totally could. So that's that's just the basic concept of setting limits. Um, so we'll go ahead and clean this up, and then we'll go on and we'll look at the next uh, the next idea. So advanced pod CPU and memory management, 
what can we do in a more advanced manner? Well, one thing that we can do is we can set up uh, uh, limits at a namespace level. And I think this is probably actually more practical because just like what we were saying, you know, where you might limit based on um, hard limit based on like team to team, but soft limit inside of a team, this might be one way for you to do that because your team is probably going to be deploying inside of their namespace. And all you really want to have is a limit on the namespace itself. So we're going to create three namespaces, uh, a low usage namespace, just for that team to show off that, that they have a low usage, uh, low limit, and then a high usage namespace because they requested more, and then uh, a namespace that is completely unrestricted. So we have those namespaces set up now. Let's go ahead and let's build the low limit range. So this is a special type of, of object. It's a limit range, and we're tying it to the low usage range. Uh, we're giving it a name, low usage range, and we're specifying that the minimum is a half CPU and 100 megs, and the maximum is one CPU and 300 megs. So we're setting relatively low limits per container uh, in this namespace. And then for the high usage, same idea, but the limits are higher, two CPUs and two gigs of RAM, and minimum is one, gig, one CPU and one gig of RAM. So we're gonna deploy both of these real quick. So now we have uh, two limit ranges created. Still no pods. If I get pod, uh, actually, top pod all namespaces, you still see it's our basic uh, cube system in the metric server. So let's try to deploy something that is over the range. So we're gonna go into the low usage namespace and we're going to request something that is asking for a gig of RAM and half CPU. And let's look real quick. Low usage is this section here. A gig of RAM is above the max and half CPU, half CPU would fit, right? Because minimum is half, maximum is one. So let's just try it. We're gonna get a failure. And it says the pod basic request pod is invalid. Spec containers resources, uh, one gig must be less than or equal to memory limit. So it tells us this pod as written is invalid. And um, you know it just completely rejects it. You can't even deploy it. So it's not that it accepts the deployment and then fails to launch or gets ohm killed or anything like that. You can't even deploy it. It's a gate. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And then if you come along and you request it to deploy into the high usage um, and you request a gig of memory and a half CPU, so basically the same resources that we just tried before, let's look at the high usage. Minimum CPU is one CPU, and we're, we're requesting a half. Now the memory minimum is one gig and we're requesting one gig. So that, that would work. So we should get rejected again based on the CPU. So minimum CPU usage per container is one, but request is 500. So this is a way for you to potentially enforce limits on your container sizing per namespace. So anything that goes into these two namespaces must fit within that range, and uh, it's up to it's up to you know whoever runs that namespace or you whoever runs the cluster uh, to decide what is appropriate for that particular namespace. So it's just one more tool that you might think about take, making use of. Nice. If you want to see successful attempts, then all you have to do is try and deploy something where, you know, things fit within the range. So uh, 200 uh, megabytes for memory into the low usage pod 
let's do that. And then of course, uh, high usage pod, we're gonna go with, um, what's the resource we're asking for? I don't see it. Well, we'll deploy it anyway, and then we'll look at top. And then we'll go with, into the unrestricted pod, which I guess I forgot to demonstrate a second ago, but unrestricted, we never set a limit on it. We never set a range limit, so uh, it's unrestricted. So pop pod all namespaces, and you see low usage pod is using up 17 megabytes, uh, and then high usage pod, I don't see. Did I, did I miss that? Oh, the metric server needs about a minute or so before uh, stuff gets emitted to it. So let's let's check it. Can't and lie. so basically, I don't think we're actually defining um, in in the high usage. I, I think it was just there was no limit set. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. And That's what I'm missing. So it's just using. It's just going to consume whatever X amount of memory and CPU yeah. in the container. Yeah. And let's do this verification, see what it shows us. Uh, custom custom columns, by the way, this would be a good time to point out that, you know, we can build a plugin. I learned that from Justin. We can build a plugin. If we wanted to run this frequently, we could have this uh, be a custom uh, cube control command through plugin. So there's our high usage pod using two CPUs and two gigs of RAM, low usage pod using one CPU and 300 megs of RAM, and of course, unrestricted is unrestricted. So yeah, it, it, am I reading this right? So you're, you're looking at the namespace metadata, we see the high usage pod was deployed with no limit set when you deployed the pod, and we're just going off of the namespace limits. That's what it's honoring. Yeah, and I think because of that, because we didn't specify any requests, it's not emitting metrics into the metric servers. That's why it's not showing up in top pod, but it is still showing up in the cube control custom, uh, you know, custom output, custom column output. Nice. So Alex Smasha, this priority on pods is cool for resource management. If you give small pods lower priority, they will be evicted to make room for the larger one. Oh, I'm getting there, <laughs> but good call out. <laughs> uh, sounds linear, but I don't know how to configure that with code. Well, we'll take a look at one way to do that. Um, so yeah, we're working our way there for sure. All right, so let's delete these clean this up and we'll move on. While that's deleting, back to the workshop. Let's take a look at setting up resource quotas per namespace. So I think this, again, we're kind of graduating through looking at the different tooling that's available. And I think this sort of gets us more uh, in the direction of what people might think about doing. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set up a namespace blue and a namespace red. And again, you might think of these as different service teams. So you might have the blue service team and the red service team. And then we're going to set a quota for the blue team that has a hard limit of CPU one and memory one gig. And then uh, the, red the red service team has a hard limit of only one load balancer. So there are all kinds of objects that you can limit. It doesn't have to be CPU and memory. So in this particular one, we're gonna limit the number of load balancers they can create. And so that way we can, you know, resource quota our spending. Um, okay, so let's do that real quick. Two new namespaces. And then we're gonna set up our resource quota. Done. You're oh. welcome. Oh. <laughs> it's just a thank you, it's yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank and you for uh, being here. 
thanks for watching on YouTube. That's awesome. Um, so let's create pods. So there will be errors that will occur when creating pods outside of the resource quota specification. I'm going to clear the screen. And you see all these errors that were created. Um, so let's see, here we go. Cube control run, we tried to run in the namespace blue. Uh, this stress uh, image uh, with asking for 512 megs of memory and two CPUs. And you see that uh, we're over our limit for CPUs. And I think maybe over our limit for memory. What was our limit for memory? Blue. Uh, no, we shouldn't have been over for memory, but definitely over for CPU. And uh, so, yeah, we got an error when, when deploying. So then, um, oh, but it was a replica set. So how many were we deploying? Did I? I guess we didn't specify, so one. So probably not because we were deploying too many. Um, so then uh, let's we deploy try to deploy into blue, and uh, that worked successfully. And when we describe the namespace for blue CPU deploy, you see that. Uh, well, let's try this again actually because that was probably too fast. So we did deploy, however, uh, we weren't able to actually come up because uh, replica set controller error creating pods, uh, it's forbidden because we failed our quota. Blue team must specify limits, CPU limits, memory. And then, what did we try? Let's just redo these because we should probably shouldn't have done them all at once. It was too hard to see on the screen. So we then tried to run in namespace red, Nginx latest, and we did. It already exists. Then we tried to expose it, which we were, well, which we were able to do the first time. Let's see if I can find that in my output up here. I may have lost it, lost the output. Yeah, dang it. Let me, let me go back and let's just do this one again because I don't like how it's all together and hard to, hard to follow that way. So basically the idea is we just want to show that we can deploy a service and then we're gonna show how we deploy and then we hit a, a quota, right? Exactly. So we're deleting the namespace, then we're going to create the namespace, then we're going to create the resource quotas, then we're going to try and run some pods. So hopefully this thing will catch up with us. There we go. Okay, so let's try and run again uh, we're trying to create a resource that doesn't have a defined limit and oh, I didn't copy. That was the right command. There we go. So we didn't define a limit. We must specify a limit CPU and memory. So basically reject the deploy because we didn't specify what limits we didn't ask for anything. So this time around, we're going to get an error um, without specifying limits. So if we try and create, it looks like it worked, but then when we describe, we see that we didn't specify the limits 
uh, CPU or memory. So let's create the, the red group. Remember, they were limited by load balancers. So if we create a deployment for Nginx and then we expose it, that builds a load balancer. And Gesundheit. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Whew. OK. So we've uh, built our service. If we expose it, you see that it gets exposed. And that goes out and provisions a load balancer. And then if we try and expose it a second time, and notice I'm changing the name, uh, Red Nginx Service 1 versus Red Nginx Service 2, I get an error hey, saying, hey, you have too many load balancers, or you can't have that many load balancers. So um, I'm over my quota. So that's a way that I can, uh, I can um, set a limit on something that's not CPU or memory. And then, of course, if you want to see what success looks like, um, if we run, notice the difference here. We're asking, we're setting limits, CPU 25, memory 250, which fits within our resource limit, and it accepts that. And then, of course, uh, same thing here. Same thing here. We can keep running things, keep adding until we go over our maximum for the namespace. And if we describe quota, you can see that we're at 750 megs. We have a hard limit for the namespace of one, or 750, I guess, three quarters of a CPU, and then uh, three quarters of a gig of RAM, hard limit of one gig. So if I were to uh, run another uh, pod. Let's do pod four. You can probably fit it in, but then when I try and do pod five, I should get an error that I'm over. You know that that would put me over my quota. Really, yeah, simple. that's solving, yeah, solving real world problems, you know, exactly. resource management in your clusters. Very exactly. cool. Exactly. So remember, you know, big cluster that that uh, more than one team has use of and shares. That's when you're going to want to look at setting some resource limits, some constraints, so that one team doesn't take up all the the resources, leaving the other team, you know, in a lurch or doesn't cause like giant uh, scale outs. You know, if you have cluster auto scaling, for example, then cluster auto scaling might kick in and say, oh, you need more resources? I'll provision you more resources and just have that, you know, continue onward uh, forever. That would, that would get to be potentially expensive. All right, we'll delete these namespaces. And then let's talk about preemption. So this is this is kind of my favorite. Um, so what we're doing here is a lot like what I uh, what I've tried to build myself in the past, where you have a set of de developer workload, and then a, and then some potentially production workload, or you have some importance. So this important workload should always get scheduled even if it's at the expense of the unimportant workload. And um, so when that happens, what you really want to do and how you want to react is you want to be able to kill off the unimportant workload enough so that you have, have room for the important workload. So what that's called is preemption. And you set, you, you can preempt work because you set priority uh, for work. So there are two, we are going to set two priority classes, low priority and high priority. And I bet you can't guess, high priority is going to be able to preempt low priority. So this is a priority class. It has a value of 100. And then low priority, and by the way, with the value being an, a number, you can start to imagine 
how do you decide granularity? Like what do I preempt first versus what do I preempt last? You can actually have kind of a graduated scale if you want to. I like keeping it simple. It's either important or it's not. So if it's not important, it's subject to preemption. So our priority class for low priority is, uh, the value is 50. Um, so these are gonna be low priority pods. And what we're gonna do is we're going to apply, uh, we're gonna build these two priority classes real quick. So we have low priority priority class and high priority priority class created. Really, really simple. And you can, by the way, set a global priority class so that if the, if the deployment doesn't specify its priority class, then it would, like I might set the default to be low and then uh, anything that is important gets, uh, gets set as high priority. So let's deploy some low priority stuff. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try and, I'm just gonna deploy Nginx, super basic. Uh, it's gonna take up a gig of memory and I'm gonna try and deploy 50 of them. And my cluster isn't big enough for 50 of them. So it's gonna basically partially deploy and then it's gonna stop. Um, so now that I've done that, if I watch the deployment, in fact, it happened really fast. It's already done. So it's done as much as it can be. I have an Nginx deployment where 21 are up and running out of the 50 and they're available, but that's it, no more. So let's actually do this in two windows. Let's um, start that and then let's open a new terminal and move that down here. And okay, so we have our 21 Nginx uh, pods. And next up, we're going to deploy our high priority. So we're gonna come along and request something high priority. And it, we're gonna try and do five of those. And they're each asking for a gig of memory. And remember, like basically all of our memory on the cluster is taken up right now by Nginx. So as soon as we did that, the scheduler was like, nope, this is high priority and we need to free up some res resources. So it killed off down to 16 Nginx deployments. Then it was finally able to schedule our high priority deployment and we got up to five, the five that we asked for. And that happened really fast. It was really simple. That's a cool demo. Like that, that to me was like, that, that was the icing on the cake right there, the, the buildup exactly. to this. So it's all about specifying your resources. And once you specify those resources, then you can start to do really cool things with them, like, uh, you know, prioritization and being able to schedule things when and where they need to be. Now, I'm curious, what do you think will happen if I delete that high priority deployment? Uh, we're going to get five more low priority deployments. Wait for it. There we go. Nice. And so uh, it, it makes it super spongy and super like flexible, you know, just like fit the stuff in wherever you can kill off things that, that, you know, you've said aren't important. And then, uh, you know, when, when those high priority jobs are done and they might go away, fill back in and scale back up those low priority jobs. Yeah. And so um, Alex Smasha had a question or made a statement on, on free tier. You know, I wish free tier would give me more stuff. Brent, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you could do something like this in kind. Uh, like you technically could test this at a very small scale just locally in, on your laptop, right? Oh yeah, I think so. You could totally um, emulate this or simulate this on your laptop uh, with kind. Um, also, free tier. Take a you know take another look at free tier, Alex Smasha, because um, I know that 
if you're using EKS, obviously that's there's no free tier for that. But if you're using EC2 instances, um, you know, there's like everyone kind of stops. They realize that, hey, you know, that one instance is free tier um, for a year, but you can do two of those or you can do one that's twice as big for half a year or, you know, so like it's, it's actually kind of a graduated scale and graduated amount of time. So if you don't need it to be free for a whole year, but maybe you're okay with it being free for two months, then you can have bigger instances and multiple of them. And you could probably set up something like this. And yeah, uh, storage is not free, but don't use EBS. Use uh, instant store if you can. And I don't know if T2s even have instant store. I'm just, you know, kind of spitballing here. But uh, definitely, uh, definitely try and experiment and see, you know, how can you, how can you fit better into free tier? And then, you know, th there will still be a few things that you might have to pay for, unfortunately, because not everything is free tier, but, uh, you know, we try and, we try and reduce that as much as possible. And I, I think, you know, listen, if you're testing, you do this for an hour, you do it for two hours, it's, it's a few bucks. Right. And not even yep. realistically, it, it's, you know, penny it sense. So I think as long as you're disciplined and, and you have to be careful, because if you leave things running for a long time, then you will pay as they grow. But that's the beauty of the cloud. Totally. And I just remembered that I saw a blog post. I haven't done this myself. I need to go back and do it. But apparently uh, we've now uh, set up we've now added the ability for you to set alarm uh, billing alarms based on daily spend. So um, that can be super awesome. I think that rolled out last week. If I don't know if you know this, Adam, but um, I want to say it was last week that we added the feature to set up an alarm based on daily spend. So instead of waiting for you to accrue $30 in your monthly bill, um, and then alarm and, you know, alert you, you could set it for, no, tell me if I ever break over a dollar a day. And uh, that way, like as you're, you know, tearing things down or bringing them back up, you can, you can much more quickly realize that, oh crap, I blew my dollar today budget. And, and uh, you can go back and investigate, you know, what did I leave running? So cool. Yeah. And we did, and we, I just saw, you know, we, we were just talking about this. We move so fast. We keep, you know, we release a lot of things <laughs> every day. So I do remember that though. And it was in the past couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely go back and check our, our blog post, uh, not the containers blog, but just the AWS blog. Um, check that out and see, uh, you know, see what's going on there. So um, yeah, I, I can't remember it. I feel like it was pretty recent though. And it was something that I, it made me want to go and like uh, log into my accounts and, and get it set up. Yeah. I, I did something with the background just now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't seem to get this thing right. Um, uh, that's right. So that was, that was really awesome. Resource allocation, resource management. You know, it's, we always talk about it in the context, we meaning you know, me, always talk about in the context of your AWS account, right? Managing your resources, your spend there and how you're utilizing everything in the whole entire cloud. But what about in your cluster? So I think this is a cool way to have those controls cluster level. That was really awesome. Very cool. All so, right. So what are we going to talk about tomorrow? So yeah, we have a pretty, pretty cool week ahead. So tomorrow and the next day we're going to, so we've talked about Copilot for ECS. Um, we're going to take Copilot and we're going to use that to deploy our services in the ECS workshop. So if you're familiar with ECS workshop, very similar to EKS workshop where we deploy microservices, we're going to do all that and we're going to do it with Copilot. So nice. it's really fun. So that's going to be cool. And then on Thursday, we have Pavan coming on to talk about encryption with uh, your container images at rest in ECR, right? Yeah, Am I, saying that right yeah I think so. And and I don't know what he's going to cover exactly, but I know that when it comes to talking about security and encryption, he is he is the man. So I'm I'm going to be tuning in to learn some things from him 
uh, for that. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. And other than that, that's it. Record time today. We have five minutes to spare before we, we end. So. This is the time that we're supposed to stay within. You know, like, <laughs> this is good. This is good. Uh, we'll, we, we, uh, we always, we never go over, but we always burn into our, our little buffer. So, uh, and I guess we still are, but not I, by as much. I think that's why people just don't go directly after us anymore. They, they buffer an hour. Because we're so inconsiderate. Sorry. Oh, we're sorry. Oh. Um, no, I, and I'm, that didn't sound sincere, but it was. It was sincerely like, I'm sorry. I want to be a good, a good channel citizen. So, um, but yeah, yeah. definitely uh, check us out tomorrow. Copilot's going to be awesome. Uh, Texan Raj, he'll be there because he says Copilot plus ECS is cool. Um, Alex smashes looking forward to Thursday. Pavan is a good guy. Um, so that's awesome. Yeah. So that's cool. it. Thank you, All everybody. Right. We will see you tomorrow. Absolutely. Later. <laughs>